Yeah, man, it's going down. It's the Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a real legend in the house today, man. Real legend in the game. I'm talking about a pioneer, you know what I'm saying, of a certain type of rap style, man, called horrorcore. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have done it since then, man, but there's only one one originator representing that SPC, man. Gangsta Nip, what's going down? Yo, 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 yo. It's your boy Gangsta Nip. What's up, DH, man? I'm so honored, you know, to be to be on your show, man. You know, I've been hearing your name fluctuating around the streets, you know what I'm saying, inside the um the barber shops and all of these, you know what I'm saying, aspects. So you know when you when 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 you reach the barber the barber shop, which is the black man's Taj Mahal, you know what I'm saying, you know you're doing something good, you know. So people started telling me, man, you need to get on that Donnie Houston show. At first I was saying, man, with Donnie Houston. So I had to sit in the wait to get my hair cut and just sit and just research. You know what I said? Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when that time come, we, we, we'll hook up. That's what I was saying in my mind. Yeah, yeah. You know? Tell me, because, I mean, you were saying with the nation, and that's one thing when I was doing just some little research, getting the show together, getting my notes together, was I was saying that the NIP was uh, the nation is power or something like that. Is it saying? Um, nation, nation of Islam is powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's, Has it always stood for that, or that was just something that came later in life? Like, how early do you get involved with, with the nation of Islam? Well, this was probably like 93, okay. you know what I'm saying, when I got down with, you know, with the nation. You know, before I came became Gangster Nip, I was Sir N.I.P. You know what I'm saying? This was your first rap name? Yeah, that's when, you know, when I was rapping on the street, rap battling, you know, um, 84, 85. It was Sir N.I.P. And so you going to, this was like high school for you or middle school? or what? what yeah, I've been, been doing hardcore, man. You know, 85, 84, 85, 86, you know what I'm saying? See, like that. And, and this is what I wanted to ask because I was thinking like, you know, a lot of horror films were going you know it was a lot of like just classic horror films in the 80s did mm -hmm. that influence your style or like where did you even come from to say i'm gonna start rapping like this this is gonna be my thing you know that's what's so cool about it man I, I really i just think that it was just it was just in me you know i was born with 12 fingers first of all and what people don't know about um you know having 12 fingers you know i was told that it was it was two it was two people forming at, at one time, but one didn't make it. See, mm. I was just the half that made it. So, no, I thank our law. I thank our law for that. But you know, back in the game, I was hanging with you know Klondike Cat, you know, you know K Reno, and you know I I didn't know how to rap. You know, they did. So during that time, man, you know, I got I got a little I got a the structure of rap from Klondike Cat. He never wrote nothing for me, but I got the structure of of rap. You know, this you know. So he's showing you like this is how you write your bars. This no, is... I, no, not really. I was just hanging. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he wasn't really just showing me nothing, but you know, if you you, you picking know, it up, just picking yeah. it up. Yeah, and then because he was in a group with Sad Warfare, you know, and when when Cat left Jones, then Cat was the best. You know, Cat was the best in South Park at that time. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when Cat left Jones, then I came through. You know, it was all at Jones at the same time. I came through. Then I became you know, I became the best. But I always, you know, I'm, I'm a big Ice-T fan. You know, my idols is Ice-T and Too Short. Hmm. That's why when you hear my albums, you're going to hear the you're gonna hear the funk and the swag of a Too Short. But you're going to hear the Ice-T temperament you know what i'm saying you know so i grew up listening to ice t man in too short and and that you have it when you combine both of those the music and the lyrics then that makes that makes gangsta nip but i just never knew you know i always wanted you know back then it was about the hardness of the rhyme hmm. you know so if you was rap battling you couldn't be soft but i didn't really know that i was doing hardcore i was just extreme with the with the detailed violence. You know, a lot of cats don't know what horrorcore, they think they're doing horrorcore, but it's not horrorcore. You know, they just saying a bunch of wicked, just a bunch of wicked words. So if you had to describe horrorcore, what would you say? Okay, this is what horrorcore actually is. Well, you know, for these cats that don't know, man, you know, horrorcore is a movie-like um, detailed imagery, you know, type, type of um, rap style. See, what it is is that 
it's like horrorcore is seeing the movie in your mind or seeing the verse in your mind like a movie without the screen. See, if you're just saying a bunch of wicked words, then it's just a bunch of wicked words, you know what I'm saying? And it, it has no detail you're not painting meaning. the picture. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know how to paint the picture because God didn't give it to them to paint the picture. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have, you know, you, you can go to Kroger's and get macaronis, but you can go to Family Dollars or Dollar Store and get macaroni. You know hmm. what I'm saying? I'm hmm. the macaroni of this hardcore. You know what I'm saying? That's why, how you think I'm still here? I made my first album in late 90. I mean, it's 2021. You know, I got an album right here, Greatest Horrors, Volume 2. You know, Greatest Horrors. Still cold blooded. I'm way better than I than I was um then. Look, the creator of horrorcore. You know, these albums are everywhere on all digital platforms, or you can just basically get it from me. You know, you can get it from me. Just PayPal me at rowdy dot w at yahoo dot com, which is r o w d y dot w at yahoo dot com. And you know, the album is fifteen dollars. You know, with shipping and handling, which is ten dollars for the United States, and it's fifteen dollars um, um, shipping and handling for overseas. So that, which is thirty dollars for overseas. So you can just, you know, get it like that. But you know, right now I have the four pack going. You buy three, you get one free. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah. Putting talk about you know when y'all forming this whole SPC thing, y'all putting that whole thing together. Oh man! Like, how do you meet K Reno? How do you meet you know? Well, you know, when me and K Reno met, we battled. Yeah, and that's how we met. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just take you. I'm gonna take you through that, man. You know what I'm saying? So at the time, you know, Murder One, you know Murder One, right? Yeah, for sure. I just got off the phone with him before I came here. He told me to um, you know, to ask you to get him on the show. Okay, too. bad, bad, bad. So at the time, you know, like I just told you, Cat had left Jones. Cat was the best. You know, once Cat left, you know what I'm saying, I took over Jones like Nino Brown. I became the best. You know, so at that time, because me, Murder One, AC Chill, Cat, Sad Warfare, we all went to Jones. See, Jones, at that time, Jones had the hardest rappers. So Murder One was like the Don King. Like, Murder One would go find out who who dope at this at high school. Reno was at Sterling. You know, or who was dope at Worthen, and 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 he would set the battles up. Hmm. Yeah, he would set it up, and it wasn't a real battle if Murder One didn't didn't set it up. You know hmm. what I'm saying? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't showtime. It wasn't official, yeah. yeah. It wasn't official if Murder One didn't set it up. So Murder One got in touch with Reno and got in touch with me at that time, and I was undefeated. You know what I'm saying? At that time, you know what I'm saying? He was undefeated. So what happened was, man, when we set the battle up. And we met on Martin Luther King and, and Belfort. We called it the battleground. You know what I'm saying? Right on the side of this little building. And you know what I'm saying? I've had a lot of battles, you know what I'm saying? You know, but that that was most definitely the, the hardest battle, battle that I ever had because Reno, even even back then, he was lyrically sharp like, like a knife. You know what I'm saying? And the, the cold part about it, I just... I had that hardcore, man, and I had the heart with it, and I had the delivery with it because, you know, I, I don't really think that, you know, you, you're not going to beat K. Reno if, you, if you're not, if you don't have, you know, the rawness, the delivery, and the detailism, you know, if you, 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 you're not going to beat him, you know what I'm saying? So we was going back, back and forth, blow. Because how we did it, we'll ha he'll, he'll say a rhyme, then I'll say a rhyme, and we'll let everybody judge who won that round. But see, back then, we was doing, you know, you know, seven to ten rounds, hmm. you know. So make a long story short, man, we was going back and forth, man. It was hours. We was going so hard, man, that it started raining. It started, we was going about two hours. It started. And like, what, Brian, what year is this? This is probably like 86. Yeah. See, it was 86. We started raining. So the rain, you know, took, say, about 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Once the rain began to subside, you know what I'm saying, you know, we just 
you know, we just called it a draw. You know, it was like seven seven. Mm. Now you know you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get seven rounds on K Reno. Yeah. So like 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 my homeboy Jordan King already say, oh Jordan King's one of my homies. He always say this. He say yeah we know Reno Reno is just a natural lyricist naturally, like like Jordan is on he's he's a natural. See others of us had to pick their stuff up like I did. You know what I'm saying and take it the way that I was gonna take it. So you know. So once we battled, man, it was just, it was just raw. So we ended seven to seven, and it just so happened, man, that he had to catch the Martin Luther King, the seven to seven Martin Luther King, back to his house, and I had to catch the same bus <laughs> back to my house. So we just got through battle, battling, cussing each other out, you know, what I'm saying hard record, slicing each other up, whatever, however, you know, and we just became friends on the bus. Yeah. You know, and that's when he had he had already had the um the SBC name. So he he just asked me to um, you know, get in, get in the click. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.